the advantages to blueprinting. Well, to make this easy, blueprinting is setting a very specific specification and keeping a very tight tolerance to that specification. The biggest advantage of blueprinting is a much smoother running engine, resulting in increased reliability. So now, I'm going to show you a few general rule of thumbs on how to set these specifications on this here whiteboard. A good rule of thumb for setting oil clearances on your main and rods would be using this formula which is crankshaft main journal diameter times 0 .001 or 1 thousandths. An example of that would be if our crankshaft journal size was 2.200 inches multiplied by 1 tenth or 1 thousandth, our ending result would be 0, 0, 2, 2, or 22 thousandths. Now you can use the same example here for our rod journals because this formula is our crankshaft rod journal size or diameter multiplied by the same 1 thousandths and that's essentially the exact same example. So if we had 2.2 inches for our rod journal diameter we're still going to multiply that by 1,000, ending in 22,000. All right, so we got our specification for our crank main journal diameter and we've already came up with our spec using the formula. Uh, so let's start talking about the tolerance here. Now in the performance world we really are going to be looking at a tolerance of about five ten thousandths. It's kind of the general rule of thumb when you're talking about clearance because you can only get one thousandths bearings difference typically unless you want to do some machining. So with that being said our spec's 22 so we're looking at a high side of 27 thousandths and a low side of, let's see, 17 thousandths. With that, we're talking about shimming up and down using different bearing sizes. Now you can only use a bearing size that is plus or minus 1 10 thousandths. This is a very common practice in blueprinting and I actually seen on a Facebook forum the other day a lot of discrepancy about this method. Essentially what, what you're doing is you're using the same blend of bearing and typically the same manufacturer and you're, all you're doing is changing the oil clearance based off of a bearing that's either plus or minus a thousandths thicker or thinner. Now when you're using a bearing that is plus or minus one thousandths you're only going to end up with a clearance difference of five ten thousandths. That's a good note to take in that it's not actually a thousandths difference, it's ten thousandths difference. So as we're looking at that, that's where we're going to get our 27 and our 17. And that's going to be that tolerance that you're going to want to stay within while you're blueprinting. Now when you're perfect, you're going to want to get that all the way across the board. And some machine shops can do it for you. Some of your local ones just can't handle that. So now that we talked about oil clearance, let's get to the next part of blueprinting and that's talking about weight and balance. Um, when you're looking at the rods and things like that, you your rod sheet should come with a few different weights or what all the rods kind of weigh. I never trust those. I always break the scale out. So in essence, let's say the rods are supposed to weigh 425 grams, but we have one that's, uh, let's say one's 423, uh, another one's 425, 
Next one's 424. And the last one we're gonna say is 426. Now, you can't add material to the fourth rod. So, all three of these need to come down to the 423, and I always go by the tenth of a gram. That's my tolerance in the weight category. So these all need to be within plus or minus a tenth of a gram to 423 grams on your rods. Next thing we talk about is going to be the pistons. And same thing goes with the pistons. They all come out with the, some kind of certified weight that they're supposed to have, and it never happens like that. Uh, you're definitely going to need to break the scale out and follow the tenth of a gram rule. Um, second to that is the piston rings also need to be measured. However, they usually are pretty consistent in their ring packs. Next piece, of, uh, <clears throat> next piece is gonna be your wrist pin. The wrist pin can absolutely be balanced with the piston. However, let's say you have one odd wrist pin and for whatever reason that wrist pin is eight more grams than all the rest. The wrist pin can absolutely be balanced as long as you're doing it in the proper areas. Now, once you add your connecting rod to your piston and you have your ring packs and everything on, they all should equal the same weight, plus or minus a tenth of a gram. And that's how you're gonna blueprint your weight for your rotating assembly. Of course, you need your crank mounts, but for your pistons and rods and things like that, you know, scale isn't that expensive and you can definitely pick up a drum like your local hardware store and we can talk about in a later video how to balance your piston and uh, rods. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this crash course on engine blueprinting, be sure to drop a like and please subscribe for the next one for more information. Now for all your performance needs, you need to visit A1PerformanceProductUSA.com or call that phone number behind me on the banner. Stay tuned.